Our next session is focused on Uber's new ad network, Uberoo. Isn't that great? Uberoo, Uberoo, O-O-H, Uber out of home. So Uberoo, I love the beat of that. Uh, and Larry Grella coming to us live from Portland, uh, along with Rob Anders of Neo and Gary Spitzer of Uber, will talk about the power of ads in art everywhere. Um, doing some great work, not only advertising, branding, but great community service with young artists and, and artists everywhere. Noting a theme, video everywhere, art everywhere. Uh, Larry Greller of Uberu, uh, take it away. We'll take a look at that now. Everybody. Uh, I'm Larry Grella. I'm the EVP of uh, sales at Uberu. We're powered by Adami. Uh, I'm here with Garrett Spitzer, who is the team lead for the Uber Topper division, and Rob Anders, the CEO from Neo. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me for this uh, session. Uh, I'm going to kick things off with um, Uber and Garrett. Uh, Garrett, can you please tell us why Uber uh, entered into the out of home marketplace? Sure. Um, so we at Uber, we um, kind of witnessed the expansion of the, the rapid expansion of the digital out of home market. Uh, and we saw it as a great opportunity to enter the space. Um, we also saw it as a great opportunity for drivers to earn some extra income on the platform. So Uber is already available in more than 10,000 cities across 69 con countries on six continents. Uh, we have nearly 5 million active drivers globally and over 18 million Uber trips happen each day. So we really think that we can both grow this kind of program within the U.S. and then really expand it internationally. That's a lot of that's a lot of scale. Um, just curious, can you give us an idea of um, you know how you might select drivers for this particular program, uh, and what markets you've actually launched here in the United States thus far? Yeah, so we uh, we will screen out um, the drivers who drive the most on the platform. So maybe the top ten to twenty percent of drivers who are driving about 40, 30 hours a week. Um, so really kind of accumulating a lot of um, hours on the platform. Um, so right now we're, we're live in Atlanta, Phoenix, and Dallas. Uh, so we have a thousand car shops uh, deployed in these three markets. Um, we have plans to expand in both kind of Chicago and Los Angeles for Q4. Um, for 2021, we're hoping to expand as many as, many as 20 additional cities. Uh, and we also have a huge interest in kind of expanding internationally. So we've had uh, a lot of demand coming um, across the world for us to kind of expand in cities like London, Sydney. Um, so we're really excited to kind of start expanding internationally as well. That's fantastic. One of the things that I've always um, espoused when I talk about our, our collaboration is that, um, you know, brand safety uh, and brand affiliation is a big component as to how we've gone to market and we've assessed things. Uh, and when you were talking about you know, getting to the top 10 or top 20% of the drivers in these particular markets, you know, one of the things that I've always espoused is uh, when you have a brand, whether it's you know, a, a tier one CPG brand or a local brand that's providing a service, um, you want that affinity or that affiliation with that driving experience to be a very positive one. Um, so when you're talking about having, you know, again, the top 10% of the professional driver fleet in a given marketplace, you know, that assurance is, is a given and that you'll have a, uh, a late model vehicle with a, a driver that's, you know, got a, a four and a half, five star rating across the board. Um, that it'll be a, a pleasant experience, both uh, cerebrally and viscerally. Um, is that a fair, safe assumption to make? Definitely. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think we take a lot of pride out of kind of being able to choose that top 10% of drivers and immediately know through our data, which are the best drivers to really target for this, for this offer. Um, so I think it, it's very apt to say that. Fantastic. 
Fantastic. Well, look, you know, I, I've said uh, all along uh, the, the, the ability to deliver video at street level uh, with really impactful messaging, it was like the next evolutionary phase that we would see in the digital out of home space. Um, the idea of having, uh, you know, a large 14 by 48 screen that could somehow interact uh, live and on the fly with a street level video uh, message that would be accretive and delivered by you know, Uber at home uh, is really super, super exciting. Um, one of the things that uh, you know, I think is really important in this entire dialogue is getting someone's attention, um, standing out from the crowd, as it were, um, and quite frankly, also guarding against banner blindness. Right? One of the things that we, we found you know, historically is having the same message repeated over and over again. You know, you drive down that street or see a, a topper and you might say, oh, I've seen that ad 10 times over. I start to ignore it. Um, one of the things that we're really cognizant of is obviously the dynamic video presentations that we would be delivering through the Uber toppers. But then the other piece, and this is where Rod Anders comes into play with Neo, is how do you get somebody's attention? How do you add to the beauty of the, you know, the optical scenery that you've got in, in a city landscape? And one of the uh, early pieces of art that Rob shared with me was a, uh, a unicorn actually taking a stroll through someone's living room or through a TSA checkpoint. And I got to tell you, if, if I was in a vehicle and I looked over to my left and I saw an Uber topper with uh, you know, a unicorn cruising through the TSA, I might shake the person to my right and say, look at what that over there. So <laughs> Rob, um, please tell us a little bit about Neo, uh, how you're, you're thinking about changing the digital out of home landscape uh, with the partnership with Uber. Okay, well, thanks for thanks for having us here. So, you know, to introduce Neo very briefly, Neo is a, is an art and technology company, and you know we're very fortunate because on the one side we're backed by some of the big venture capitalists um, who look at us as kind of the next Spotify or Netflix or iTunes with regards to bringing a new content experience to the masses in an innovative way using technology, and at the same time we're supported by some of the most influential people in the art world, the president of the Guggenheim and so forth, and. One of the big challenges, even before COVID, was how do you bridge between the traditional art world and bring art to the, to the broadest possible audience to really inspire people everywhere? And I think, in fact, now more than ever during COVID times, you know, the levels of stress and anxiety around people more than ever need that opportunity to just stop for a moment in their day-to-day -day lives, maybe reflect, start a conversation, put on the person next to them and say, look at that and what does that make me think about? And, and I think that... You know, generally, if we take a step back and companies like Uber have been at the forefront of bringing tech into the world, you know, we're living in this digital, this digital, uh, this digital world where we don't always know what's real and what's not. Um, wherever we go in the real world, we used to be able to be in the real world. And now we've got information and advertising. Um, the Internet was meant to bring us together, often alienates us. And I think there is a need more than ever to have a complement to all of that through bringing meaningful, positive digital experiences to people. And I think the best example probably to refer to would be the out of home market. And we've done a lot of work starting in areas like shopping malls or airports where, you know, over the years, there's more and more as this market's grown displays, they're somewhat ubiquitous. And the question that people are asking is, is it so much so now that we're not even paying attention? This notion of banner blindness. And how do we on the one side from a business standpoint, ensure that we can engage people and then use that attention span to convert them and to communicate them ultimately to, to fuel the market. And I think also, whether it's real estate owners or shopping mall owners, or in this case, Uber, there are brands that anyway are always looking at, you know, how can we contribute back to society, you know, our corporate social responsibility play. And when you bring all of that together, and you think the Neo, one of the things that Neo is doing is actually empowering artists all over the world to showcase and to actually earn from their art in innovative ways, and you bring this curated art experience into cities everywhere to really inspire people around the world. So you know, it's the most innovative example of public art that I can really think of because it's moving and it has its own questions and challenges. So on the one side, it's kind of bringing that contribution and engaging with the art community and supporting the artists like no other way before. And then at the same time, it's giving people that opportunity to stop, grab someone, look, and then obviously the ad that's following it has much higher value. So this is just the beginning. I think it's kind of in some ways a new format, a new medium. And we're super excited to be working with the Domini and with Uber, um, not just to launch this, but to see how this can actually, you know, go further 
uh, especially when we look at the ways that people can engage with this experience and then take it home and potentially experience it in the comfort of their home as well. So a lot of work and it's an exciting moment. Indeed, indeed. And Rob, I think to your point, it's uh, as we've seen uh, the, the ability to kind of uh, get people to perk up and pay attention uh, with the insertion of a very, very unique piece of art in between you know, the messaging from our brand partners. It really adds to the efficacy of the ads that are running. Um, we're seeing you know, a greater degree of uh, retention for either the, the messaging of the campaign or the brand itself or the call to action. Uh, so it's actually been a really nice um, symbiotic relationship between the, I'll call it the, you know, the public service element uh, of Neo's artwork and then the, the commercial aspect of you know, the Uber out of home messaging. Um, to that end, Garrett, anything you'd like to add as a comment uh, on what Rob had to say? Yeah, just, I would love to echo a lot of his comments. I really, really love uh, kind of as a, as a company, Uber loves to support the arts and what better way to have it uh, distributed across all of our vehicles across the platform. And I think it's also great to really give drivers something that they can be proud about displaying. And, and, and their kid might see or their spouse might see kind of a cool piece of artwork shown on their car and that can really be a source of pride for that driver. Um, so, so many reasons that we're really excited for this partnership. Excellent, excellent. Well, um, you know, in summation, uh, you know, our partnership with, with uh, Uber and, and Uber U as, as a business entity is, is, is very, very exciting uh, to all three of us here as partners. Um, uh, one of the things that we like to, you know, stress in closing is, it's meant to be a very, very easy to use platform uh, to book, to uh, upload creative, um, to execute and then get measured feedback. We actually are um, partnering with firms to do attribution studies, list studies, uh, activation studies, all of which you know, there's the element of um, awe and the shiny object, which is this new medium. Uh, but of course, as many marketers know, if you cannot measure it, you cannot look at results. Um, nice to have is one thing, but must have is another. And we'd like to you know, present a, a solution here that is a must have in your, in your marketing and media mix. Um, so please, by all means, follow myself um, at uh, lgrella at uberu.com. Uh, look forward to collaborating with any and all of you that um, are interested in the Uberu offering. And um, looking forward to a really exciting 2021 as we uh, expand throughout uh, the U.S. And as, as Garrett mentioned, uh, Chicago and L.A. look to be next on the horizon with many more to come. Uh, so with that, I'll say thank you so much for your time. Garrett, thank you so much. Rob, thank you so much. Very, very exciting stuff. And uh, look forward to continued collaboration. Great. Thank you. Let's do it. Thanks. Cheers. Larry Grella. Great job, Larry. That was terrific. Ads and art. Good stuff. Adami keeps on innovating. And did you see that great background? Luba Giglia from Adami created that. And Luba is actually not only a great marketing person, but she is also on our We Do uh, Board of Advisors. That's the Women Empowerment and Digital Out of Home Board of Advisors. Luba, thank you. Larry, great job. And Jonathan, uh, <laughs> John the good eye. Thank you. Always terrific. Uh, look, that was really important. Thanks for your innovating in the digital out of home space. Thanks for the art and thanks for all the memories. Ads and art.